After um, the doctors told me that I had an enlarged heart and that I would possibly need a transplant in the near future, I was very upset and scared that I would die before I even would get the transplant. I had two small children and they told me that if your heart doesn't go back to a normal size within six months to a year, you'll definitely need the transplant. They put me on a whole bunch of heart medication and I had an internal defibrillator put in me because my heart used to go into VTAC all the time with bad arrhythmias that were life-threatening. So um, I was just nervous and afraid and it wound up being four and a half years from the day they told me my heart was enlarged and put me on medications that it lasted and then exactly four and a half years later I went back downhill and I needed to go on the list at that time to get the transplant and I only waited 21 days to get it because I have AB positive blood and it's universal so I was actually very lucky because at the end there I was very sick in a quick quick amount of time the doctor came in that day and said you're gonna need the transplant like now and I was like can I just go home with a beeper and wait for it because back then everybody had beepers and this was 17 years ago and he said no you're too sick to go home you have to wait here for the heart I didn't realize I was that sick I didn't realize I was dying they had me on all different kinds of medication where I kind of felt okay but that medicine wasn't gonna last forever the doctor said and I needed the heart I just was basically sitting there waiting every day to see if there was gonna be a heart for me I was getting sicker and sicker just sitting there weaker and then I got pneumonia I'm just sitting in the bed all the time and I was I had high fevers and my organs were starting to fail and my mom told me I was looking yellow. While I was in the hospital or waiting for the transplant, Life Magazine was there doing a story on people from Mount Sinai and Columbia Presbyterian that were waiting for heart transplants and they asked me if I wanted to be involved with it and I was like, sure. So they did an article about everybody that was sitting around waiting for this these hearts and took pictures and we didn't know until the end um, who was really going to be in the magazine or who was even going to get you know chosen for it and I wound up being in the article and being on the cover of uh, Life Magazine. Right here. This is a picture of me uh, the, the day after I woke up from my surgery. Okay. of me and my transplant cardiologist, Dr. Gass, and this is after my transplant. He was just coming in my room to listen to my new heart and see how I was doing. This is actually a picture of my heart in a cooler, like you'd bring to the beach, coming to the hospital. And this is a picture of me on July 4th, which was about a week after my transplants with my kids. This is Joe and this is Nikki. Uh, Nikki was four and a half, Joe was six and a half in this picture. And you see they're in like uh, scrubs and a gown and I had a mask on because when you get a transplant you have a low immune system. So your body doesn't reject the heart, they give you anti-rejection medication and I could get sick from other people so I had to be careful very sterile situation in the beginning. So this is a picture of my heart donor. His name was Daniel and he was 18 years old when he died. It was the night before his high school graduation. He got into a car accident literally around the block from his house. It's very sad and um, this is a picture of me with my chest opened up and that is Daniel's heart as they're gonna put it inside of me. Eight years after my heart transplant, I was asked by Ladies Home Journal to do an article on my twin girls that I had six years after my transplant. I was the first woman in the United States to have twins after a heart transplant. So they wanted to do an article with, about the girls on their first birthday and about my donor family that I had met um, a year before that. And they came down for the girls' first birthday. 
Okay, this is Diane and Paul, my heart donor's parents. And this is a picture of Samantha, one of the twins. A couple days after she was born, she had this hemangioma on her neck. Out of nowhere, it appeared when she was a couple days old, and it was like a strawberry mark, and it's actually shaped in the, like a heart, which is a little odd because her name is Samantha Danielle, and I did the middle name after Daniel, my heart donor. And she has this on her, and she's still, she's gonna be 10 in June. She still has it, it's much smaller, and it turned like white. The birthmark on the back of our neck uh, is definitely like a sign my donor family feels from their son that he like lives on, because I, you know, her middle name was Danielle, and his name was Daniel. Um, still keep in contact with them. I talked to, they have three other children, and their daughter, Sarah, who is 26 now. I talk to her like, you know, every month we text back and forth and she's visited me twice. I actually am going to go up to Buffalo this summer to see the whole family. Um, we always felt like they were a family right away when we met them. I try to do whatever my kids need and be happy because life's too short and you don't know what's going to happen. Especially after that experience I went through. I don't know how long I'm gonna, at first we don't, there's no time how long someone can live with a transplant for heart. And it's already been 17 years, which I think is a long time in the heart transplant world. So I feel blessed and lucky to still be here. This is Joe Massaro, reporting for The Pulse.